Cool. All right. So this is like the first time I've done anything like this, I guess. I'm not going to really call it a debate or anything because maybe we'll find some some common ground. But um, for the people who are for the audience, they're going to see the title of this and they'll know what we're talking about. But um, we'll just start with this Instagram post that I made just a little over a month ago now. It seemed like it was less than that. But um, I just had an Instagram post that said like the caption or the thing on this on the video said rotational power is meaningless. Um, so then here's my caption just says, this is not moving the needle for anyone who wants to throw harder or hit a ball harder unless he is severely undertrained, in which case just getting stronger makes more sense anyways. And then I said, this does have value in terms of providing some movement variability, which I'm a fan of, but rotational power reject that. Uh, so yeah, Jordan, why don't you just give me your, you maybe your initial reaction. And then we've had some interaction about it back and forth since, but yeah, why don't you just kind of say what you That's My initial reaction to the post was like, I like, and I followed you. We talked briefly. I followed you for a little while now. I like what you do. I don't think you're going to put something out without thought or reason. Um, you've got the whole YouTube series and you're just kind of dissecting different um, staples in strength and conditioning that makes me think. And I feel like it makes a lot of people think because you're getting good feedback. So I don't think you just do it out there for no reason. Um, and my second thought was good for you. That thing took off, which is awesome. And <laughs> isn't that the point of, of what you're doing is to get good conversation out of this? So I wouldn't call this a debate either. I think it's a conversation. We probably agree on a lot of this. Um, one piece of that, um, it didn't catch my attention until just now, is you said it might be good for weak athletes. I want to make sure I say this right. For weaker athletes, I would actually disagree with that. Um, it's actually made me kind of think about the stuff I do. I don't think it's as good for the weaker athletes because you would agree, right? They just need to get stronger and just yep. get stronger at the basics. Yep. I think it is actually better for the more coordinated um how do I say this? The top end guys that are already really coordinated, that are going to perform it efficiently, or the ones that are right on that edge, that the med ball throw, you know, whatever pattern um, we're talking about rotation, that rotational pattern, if they could just get a little more efficient, that could bleed over to swing your hitting. And I know sports specificity, it's a whole thing. You know, people are all over it or not at all. I don't think it's sports specific to throw a med ball because you don't throw a med ball in a baseball field. You don't, you know, whether you're at the plate or on the mound or wherever. I get that. But what I'm looking at is the coordination of the lower body through the torso into the hands. And that's, that's where things change, right? You know, you're not coming off of a two fingertips like you're throwing a baseball. You're not swinging a bat with two hands. That's, that's where it differs, right? The implement. But I think the coordination pattern is is huge um and i agree about the power i don't think power is the right word for it i think and i've talked to a few guys in the last month about this just to kind of get their feedback guys that i would say probably i would just say they're better coaches than me that's the way i'd say it. i think it's rate of force development is kind of the con conclusion i came to and it's the efficiency of the movement do you have any thoughts on that yeah, I actually, yeah. So I feel like rate of force development and power oftentimes are just used interchangeably. Yeah. So what you're saying is it's better to be, to describe this as rate of force development as opposed to power. So what's That's the difference? Fun. What's the difference in the way you're using those two terms? I don't think it's heavy enough to be power. I don't think the, you know, four pound, six pound medicine ball is heavy enough because, you know, but power, power, my picture power, power right? Power is just the output, right? Yeah. So like anything you do, there's a there's a power output, right? So like. Right. So would you call jumping power or velocity? Like a, a 10 foot jump, you know, someone dunks. So would I call it like training for power or training for velocity? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I, so I wouldn't call it either. I would just call it like training the skill of jumping. Generally. Okay. The general skill, the general task of jumping, is what I would say. 
Um, I, I, I don't, I reject the term like training for power as well. Um, Fair. Yeah. And we can, and that like, that's a whole nother thing too. Um, so like I was asking you, I was making the point that rate of force development and power right. often are used interchangeably in like a colloquial sense by a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? I do. So if, if you're saying, God, now I don't want to put words in your mouth. If you're saying it's better to describe okay, these, like, we, these, these yeah. rotational throws as training rate of force development, but not power, why rate of force development, but not power? What's the difference between those two terms? That makes it that makes it worthwhile of mentioning. I'm gonna get away from the terms because I might just be I know I might just be saying the wrong thing. The reason that I like to train these things is for the efficiency of the movement pattern. And whatever the output, we got a radar gun. You throw the ball 35 miles an hour, um, which is pretty good with a four pound ball. If you used to be throwing at 31, something has happened to make you make that ball go faster. Whether it's power, yeah, I agree. I agree with with that for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I guess is our debate: what has happened to make that ball go four miles an hour faster? How does that happen, or does it matter? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's uh, move on. Not let's continue this. Okay, so if you go from throwing the medicine that four pound ball. You go from 31 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. Are you actually, and we're going back to rotational power, are you producing more rotational power or are you just becoming a more efficient thrower generally? You know, because so, all right, when I was in grad school, I had to do this uh, project of like writing up an annual training plan for baseball slash softball athletes and we had to cite uh research and justify everything with citations every exercise we choose sets and reps all of the loading volume all of that stuff we had to cite like we had to justify it using research and so this was a group project and one of the one of the group members i was in wanted to use like these rotational medicine ball throws as an exercise selection and so when we dug into the research, and I did, I probably should be able to cite this or like bring up the title for now, but I don't. Um, oh, the the research showed, or at least this one study showed that if I perform ten reps of these medicine ball throws, and then you perform ten reps of these medicine ball throws, my rep from rep one to rep two to rep three to rep four, all the way through rep ten, all ten reps are going to be performed with a different strategy. So like. I, I believe this was like with EMG uh, type of measurements. So like in one throw, it'd be my obliques that are like firing harder or activating better. And my next throw would be like my front delt thrown, like using my arms to throw the ball. In another another rep, I'd be like loading up my back glute more. You know what I mean? So like these, yeah. you'd be performing it differently. And then if you perform 10 reps, the same thing would happen where you'd perform it differently at the time. So then it makes me question, okay, how are we like, yeah, how are we measuring rotational power if we're using the velocity of a medicine ball throw? Because at that point now you're measuring the velocity of the ball. You're not measuring the power of these, of this rotational movement. Because the power could be coming from like the back leg. Um, the power could be coming from the front arm. You know what I mean? So you're still, you're getting the unit of measurement, which would be the velocity of the ball, but that doesn't necessarily mean whatever part of the body is primarily rotating yeah. is the primary engine of producing power. You know what I mean? I get that. So that's where like, I have questions with this because. Yeah. So what, like, what would be the criteria to consider something rotational because like i've seen you dunk a basketball like i can dunk a basketball when you jump you do a max effort approach jump to go dunk a ball there's some level of rotation at the hips there's some yeah. level of rotation in the spine there's some level of rotation at the shoulders you know what i mean so like what would the criteria be in order to consider certain tasks or activity rotational you know 
And then what would be, what like yeah. what degree of rotation at what joints at what velocity under what environment and constraints you know so like the whole this umbrella term of rotation it, it's that's why I say it's meaningless not saying that the output is meaningless but like the term itself is kind of meaningless I think I agree with you I think I agree about ninety percent of what you just said there I don't know if we're measuring true rotation I think if you want to measure the rotation you have to sit down. You take out their lower yes. body, right? Yes. We're not doing that. Yes. Doing okay. That. So that was, that was another thing that I looked at the research in is that like one of the, one of the, uh, one test that actually showed some like internal consistency and inter-rater reliability yeah. is a test. If you like sit on a box, you grab like a cable or a Kaiser rope and for just kind of back, you take out the legs you like extend your arms. So you kind of take out the shoulders and you rotate at the spine only. Like that was the only type of test that had any, any consistency with technique to actually measure rotation. You know? so, so I don't think that I or whoever in a facility that does kind of the stuff I do with baseball or whatever sport, I don't know if we're measuring rotation. I'm measuring a med ball push, whatever that is. Now you talked about the, rep to rep difference um i think most people suck so bad at medicine ball throws in most of the posts i see um and i think they're definitely going to be different rep to rep what i'm looking for and what a lot of the coaches that i've talked to about this are looking for is it's visual you know i don't have a force plate in my place um and i've got 40 minutes with the team till they're on to the next team i'm looking for back leg internal rotation i'm looking for, for the the front leg to break you're going to see that in a hit in a swing and a throw and i'm looking for the rotation to work from the ground up through the ball um and is it coming from the oblique is it coming from the back leg back arm yeah it's coming from all of that and you can see you can see in a kid that's doesn't have that coordination sequence and a kid that does you're going to see it and you don't need a radar gun you can hear it and you know watching as much baseball as i have and there's definitely people that have seen a lot more and understand it better you know the difference with your eyes so i'm not yeah you're right i'm not measuring rotation i'm and does it transfer to throwing and swinging um i just read two articles studies that says it does um i didn't do the studies i wasn't there for them but i know that my best hitters and the guys that are going to start varsity coming up at their different schools for me and our programs they throw the ball the hardest off the wall and for me that means something um does it make sense yeah no i totally agree with that uh and so then another question for you so like i told you i work with the football team here so our yeah. football team um periodically we'll have them do some version of a medicine ball throw um whether it's like whatever, any sort of rotational medicine ball throw. I don't know how to coach it. Like, and yeah. I'll get, I'll get, uh, I'll get athletes doing reps in front of me and then asking, Hey, am I doing this right? And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Just throw the yeah. ball. Like, I, I really don't know. Uh, sure. Cause I don't know what I'm supposed to look at because. So going back to if you're, if like, what is a good rep is a good rep. If you throw the ball harder or is a good rep, or is a good rep determined by um, how the movement is performed? You know, because I could throw the ball. I could probably throw the ball really hard doing yeah. it in what a lot of people would consider uh, improperly. You know what I mean? So like, we get a like, lot of that. Yeah. So like, what? How do you determine what a good rep is if it's not purely based on ball velocity, but it's also not purely based on uh, like the aesthetic of the movement? So the. I'm going to stick with the med ball push because I think that's the best one. So we've what, got a lot of kids. We're doing a med ball yeah, push. Yeah, yeah. What, what is that? Yeah. But I'll show you. Um, can I screen share? Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, so for, I'll tell you how to do it wrong first. We want our elbow behind the ball. Here's the ball. If your elbow and wrist stay behind the ball through the throw, that, at least for the top down, is what we're looking for. A lot of kids, and you can throw it harder if you just rip it, elbows there. You're going to throw it harder that way, but in this specific case, we're not looking for that. So, um, screen share. There we go. Um, 
it says you disabled it. Is there a way to? Oh, shit. It's all good. Share screen. That's me. All right. All right. We're back. Okay. Um, so I'll just I'll just show you on my on my phone. Um, as I'm as I'm pulling this up, I'll talk about what I mean. You can throw the balls. You can throw the ball hard the wrong way. We do we do med ball pull downs. You know how they do pull downs with baseball where they just run and throw the ball and they fall like sixteen yeah. times. Yeah, not the biggest proponent of that. Um, you know, if, if a kid can self organize, he's a great athlete. It's probably going to be okay. Um, but I don't need my nine year old doing it. Um, you can definitely throw the ball harder that way. That's just not what we're looking for. So I don't know how well this is going to translate without the screen share, but um, I'll pull up the video I'm looking for here. Um, well, will I? There it is. Okay. So you notice here, you said you know how to how to coach him. Yep. See that. Yep. Okay. This will just run back over and over again. So you see how I'm keeping my elbow behind the ball in this throw. If you yep. just rip the ball down with two hands, first of all, you're using two hands, right? You're gonna throw the ball harder. But as far as like coaching with good form, you see how that front knee stops and it doesn't mush forward anymore? The front, your right knee. Yeah, my, yeah, correct. See how there everything stops and it's yep. able to transfer that force. A bad throw, you're going to see it. Um, whoever's doing it just mush through that front knee. And they're losing all of that force from the ground through the ball that they could have had work its way up the chain and then snap through the ball. Um, and then another thing you're going to see is just. I'll, I'll show you one more time. I know it's me, and I'm not the best in the world at this, but you see that back leg internal rotation? That's literally yeah. what this drill is working on. Without that, this will not carry over whatsoever to swinging a baseball bat, throwing a ball. So, yeah, there's you can run, rip the ball off the wall, and we do that, okay? We get a different adaptation out of that. But if we're talking about the specific drill, that's how I would coach that. And if if the player's not matching up to those specifications, they might throw it harder. They might, honestly, they're just going to probably throw it really soft. Um, and like I said, I'm not looking at, I don't really think of this anymore now that you've brought this up. I'm not measuring rotational power. I'm measuring this specific thing. Mm -hmm. um, I had another question for you about this. Do you think, okay, so it's probably not you, you you'd say it's probably not very worthwhile to do something like that for an athlete who's less developed. Correct. Thinking about it now. Uh, you actually kind of brought this up for me because I've got, you know, a coach as young as eight years old. We don't we don't do it with eight year olds. We do it with the 11 year olds. Right. Do they need that? Well, could they just play tag and shoot? Right. I wish I could just I wish I could just run all these kids through games for 40 minutes. But I have to have some semblance of um structure i guess right. so the, yeah yeah uh, you you understand so yeah teach them how to squat teach them how to push up did we ever when we were young did we go through and learn how to squat and push up and do a chin up no we just played on the playground we played sports outside um no one would have had to teach us how to throw a medicine ball i don't think it matters until you're high school right right junior high right so you were throwing this medicine ball and it's lining up okay you're probably going to end up being a baseball player in high school we're going to want to see this coordinator coordination replicated and it, this is the big point um and i can't believe i haven't said it till now they get so much volume swinging and throwing um that we can't just play more baseball you it, you can't they already play so much all the time at all hours of the day. So if I want to replicate any sort of rotation, whatever we want to call it in the weight room, which I do, I think it's important. And I can also get the opposite side that way. This is like the only way to do it as opposed, you know, we could use a cable, you could use a band, whatever, but the only way you can release an object is to throw a medicine ball um, in various ways. Yeah. Would you agree with that? And I think this is probably what I would conclude is, they get so many reps yeah. of that type of rotational movement, whatever you want to call it, 
that it just you can't really uh, elicit any more adaptation than what they're already getting from their sport through training? I think I can because, and I've, I've thought about that too. This is maybe the most competitive thing we were able to do in our weight room, um, especially when we get to the elder teams, um, because they, because they move well and they can actually throw it hard. They understand it, and I get complete and total buy-in. In my weight room specifically, I have two squat racks. I've got 12 guys in there, right? We're not going to spend a ton of time under the barbell, and they're already doing that with their high schools. I kind of serve a different purpose, um, especially this time of year. So I got to get the biggest bang for my buck as fast as possible. So I'm going to have them sprint. I'm going to have them do a little bit of lifting. Like I said, they're already lifting three or four times a week with their, you know, wherever they go to school. So I'm going to do kind of higher impact things. It's going to, at this point in the year, bring that team together. And it, for me, it's med ball competitions and running. That's, you know, those are the biggest things I can get in 40 minutes. Yeah. And I, you know, you get a, you get a kid that lays, we do a one where we lay down and we're on our back. We throw the ball as hard as we can at the wall. We've got two kids on a team to throw a 36. Like that's going to bring up that kid that's throwing 29. Why can't I throw this 30? And yeah. it, it's worked. And shame is a good uh, motivator. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree with, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're not, yeah. we're not like, Oh crap, you threw a 29. It's like, He's throwing a 36. I can't even throw a 30. Yeah. And that's with anything, right? It could be 315 on the on the deadlift, whatever it is. Um, but like we kind of talked about earlier, I have 40 minutes with these teams. If we're going to warm up for five, whatever, um, we're going to talk for a minute at the end. I've got like 36 minutes. Like we're going to, yeah. we got to, we got to get in there. I want to have some fun with them. Um, and I want to build some camaraderie. And does that translate to throwing a baseball down a mound? I, I think it could be argued either way. Yeah. But at a certain point, I don't know if I care um, because of because the session goes well. Yeah. Yeah, that's all fair. I think those are all fair points. I don't think we really disagree on much. I don't think we. I don't think we disagree either. I think you yeah. make. I think there's just some term some terminology that we would use differently. Um, yeah. But yeah. But I'm going to stop this recording because it's going to kick us off in three, okay. three minutes. So everyone who will watch this, thanks for watching. And yeah, check in later. So. Cool. cool. Thank you, man. Thanks for thanks for following through like this and having a conversation. Um, yeah, no, thank you. I, I had like I we have some other people that were potentially lined up who never followed through with it, too. So, okay. yeah, I appreciate it, man. So yeah. thanks, Jordan. We'll see. Take you. care, man.